Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be here with you as we discuss how to bring about the most innovative solutions on our teams by cultivating the diversity of thinking styles and perspective differences. My experience is based on coaching expatriates moving around the world while they create their own respectful team cultures that come together to solve complex problems. My aim is to share with you what I've learned in my 30-year international life. Canadians are polite. What does that mean? When I first meet my expats, they've either been told or they've been told or, or they've heard that expats are polite. Canadians are polite. Their expectation from me is that I'll tell them exactly what that, that means for everybody on their team. What does that look and sound like? What would you answer? My answer to this question is, it depends. They need to learn how to do their own cultural due diligence to find out what that means to their own team members. So what is a cultural due diligence? And how can we link it to cultivating diversity on our teams? Since time is limited, I'm only going to focus on two aspects. Thinking style differences and how to use the values applied tool to uncover what key values mean to different members of the team. So for thinking style differences, there are three main steps. One, be aware of thinking styles differences through a cultural self-assessment. Two, be able to recognize different thinking styles by listening to what different people say and how they organize their thoughts. And three, value each style. Know that at different stages of any project, different styles are more effective. Now moving on to values and behaviors. What drives and triggers your different team members? What are their behavioral expectations? For example, so what does it mean to be treated respectfully in different contexts, at different meetings? What makes them feel safe? What behaviors are they looking for from different people on their teams? What are the underlying values that drive these behaviors? And finally, the amygdala response. So how many of you have tried to look into your own heads for an answer, and all you get is blankness? That's your classic amygdala response. We want to minimize that. I'm also going to talk about perspective differences. So again, I'm dealing with people moving around the world for one company. So the host office perspective is based on what the receiving team, let's say the Canadian team, believes is important for a project. The host office has processes, values, behaviors that have evolved based on the unique environment and circumstances, as well as their stakeholders and the greater national context. The home office perspective is where the expat comes from. So for, let's say, France. The expat would have worked on a number of projects with French teams in France and developed that national perspective. And this is what is their truth. Then you've got the global perspective. They need to know that project participants in different offices around the world understand what's important to global headquarters. They care about the results. So last week I was in northern Ontario working in a mine with a Brazilian couple. Their success is going to depend on whether they're able to understand these perspective differences and bridge them. And finally, to get buy-in. We're going to talk about that a bit later. So what are common expat objectives? turning around poorly per performing operations, increasing market share, streamlining global operations, transferring technical knowledge, building up a local leadership pipeline to take over operations once the expat leaves, and aligning corporate cultures after an acquisition. So as you can imagine, thinking style differences, values, what they mean to the different people around the table will play an important role on how problems are solved within a project. Let's
let's dive into thinking style differences more. So we've got two continuums here. Deductive problem solvers process information by really drilling down. They're constantly asking why. What's worked? What hasn't worked? Why do we need to do this? What underlying theories might help us understand the problem better? Inductive problem solvers always look for best practices. They would ask themselves, so what, is our, what has our competition done? How have they dealt with a problem? So in manufacturing, could we use a Toyota production system? Analytical problem solvers focus on the details, and they work through the problem step by step. They chunk it, and they, that's how they can manage the problem solving. And finally, the systemic thinker, problem solver, focuses on the big picture. So how does it impact global stakeholders? How do we align this problem and the solving of this problem with global headquarters? So my values applied tool. Since I've, I've come here to talk to you about the role of values and the expectations that people have about how the team should behave in different situations. So this tool is a means of making team members aware of their own personal expectations. Because it's only by starting to think about what do I expect that I can actually understand more about the values and what drives them and what's important to me. In other words, the overall objective of this tool is to raise awareness, have a transparent conversation with a coach and then with a team about how to thoughtfully create respectful team cultures that are safe and leverage thinking style differences and respect people's values. So beyond the everybody's company's work values, what other values impact work interactions? When I work with expats, especially senior managers, and I ask them, what does a professionalism or a good work ethic look like? They'll say, I'll know it when I see it. And I ask them to drill down and say, no, no, no. What does that look like? What are you looking for when you come in and meet your team for the first time? We drill down with respect, quality of work, loyalty, transparency. So what I found is most important when doing this exercise is to understand the project, the participants, and the key phases. Because the better the examples are, the behavioral examples are, the more people have found that the exercise resonates and is valuable. So going back to the different perspective, what does the host office, so the Canadian office, need from the expat? They need the expat to really listen, listen to the history, what's happened before, what's worked, what hasn't worked, listening for values, what's important to us, valuing the differences and bridging the perspectives. It's the history that helps you understand what makes each office unique. And it's only by acknowledging and celebrating successes that change can really happen. So what does the expat need from the host office? Buy-in. <laughs> so what is buy-in? Buy-in is the host office really wants the expat there. If they don't, value can't be added. So without buy-in, they won't get the support they need, the insights, the expertise, and they won't get the host team's engagement. To conclude, so how to cultivate diversity? We take the time to really understand what behaviors are expected, why, what values are linked to them. We understand and leverage thinking style differences, and finally, we understand that there are at least three perspective differences linked to expat assignments which need to be bridged. By understanding, valuing, and leveraging that, this diversity, we arrive at the most innovative solutions. Thank you for your time and attention.